Hello, I'm Agnieszka Szczerba, the co-host of the Sherpa Search on Tech podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Piotr Hołownia, IT and Digital Director at Global Tech Platforms at Rekit. But before we start the conversation, I would like to say thank you for all your likes and for all your subscriptions. I am very happy that you are here. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is the right moment to do it. Coming back to the conversation, we will answer the question, what is the difference between the role of a CTO, CIO and CDO? And who is the driver of a digital transformation in a company? And what are the best practices in this area? Can you describe the role of a CDO in a large company, in a large enterprise? Absolutely. The role of CEO is a very specific role, actually. It appeared a couple of, uh, let's say, over the mo most than a couple of years ago. But in general, this is the role which is between technology and business. Uh, and I see that CDO mostly uses technology for realizing business goals, but his main uh, goal is to be kind of a evangelist and a translator and somebody who knows the mostly the technologies in order to define and implement business changes and uh, actually generate value of the business. So a lot of uh, responsibilities of a CDO uh, are comprised of business activities. This is uh, this is kind of the knowledge of technology that you use to implement changes and implement processes of digitalization uh, as a tool to create the competitive advantage, to create the unique intellectual property generated by the company. And uh, this is a very brief description of the role of CDO. And I can break it down uh, into uh, a couple of tasks. So in general, a CDO moves across the company and supports all the technological innovations and works to create the environment where, as a company, we can generate competition, competitive advantage on the market. Uh, we define as CDOs actually the strategy uh, of digitalization of the companies and then implement them. We work with a lot of stakeholders in the company in order to turn digital, uh, to turn analog processes or standard processes that we have into a digital efficient processes adjusted to the modern organizations and modern worlds. Uh, we also act as a a uh, gluing element and uh, creating facilitator of collaboration between silos very often. We sometimes we have in the organizations, depending on the model of the organization, a silo between technology and business. They communicate through some governance processes or some processes which require the formal. And CDOs usually stand in the middle, understanding business, trying to use as much as technology in order to create collaboration environment, to share knowledge, and create kind of the digital ecosystem in the company. Uh, finally, we own the digital uh, projects portfolio or products portfolio that we have. And we create KPIs, we create business metrics, we measure the investment that the company has uh, has done, has, has made into, into the digitalization as such. And we actually have some tools, have some resources at our disposal. So, to brief to summarize it very shortly, we need to be kind of a digital evangelist who is able to identify which technology to use most, in which place to use technology for the best business result, actually. And uh, this is the role of the CDO to push digital transformation because we often get the uh, the the task to create the strategy, to start implementation and to push digital transformation across the company. So we look into the organization, we look where we can automate, where we can digitize the processes, when we can do things more efficiently, differently, thanks to use of the of the technology, actually. How does it relate to the role of, uh, of a CIO or CTO? Like a, a CIO was the first role of of an IT guy in a, in a, in a company, so to say. Uh, you know, this is a very interesting question because uh, there are a lot of people that do not really differentiate because it's, uh, this role uh, can be fluctuating, you know, between a CDO and CIO and CTO, you can have as many people of as many definitions of as many CIOs, CDOs and CTOs, and then we'll get as many definitions. But mostly, I would say, from my point of view, 
uh, a CDO is the person who is the closest to the business, actually understands the technology uh, and is focusing on making business processes uh, efficient and digitized by use of technology. Whereas CIOs and CTOs often focus on governance, often focus on technologies and creating the best technology for the business requirement. And they are sometimes more connected to the business as usual or creating technology strategies like implementing cloud, for example, in the organizations or making technology more adaptable or creating a government a governance process, which is very efficient and able to react. For example, agile methodologies uh, was something that was very useful for technology area to be able to adjust and to adapt to. So uh, a digital uh, person uh, like CDO looks very closely to the business processes and looks holistically to the business and understands and tries to find the places in the organization and the organizational processes where we create, when we can create customized digital solutions and use the best technologies to generate business value. And if, you, if we create such a role in the company, this is the specific uh, duty and the task, which is not very connected with uh, leading, governing technology, creating uh, technology strategies, which are uh, very important to the most of the organizations, but it's uh, very important that in comparison to CIO or CTO, this CDO role has a specific uh, business drive using technologies. So this is like the most, the biggest difference for, for, in my opinion, between those roles. So CDO more towards business, CIO and CTO understands business, but they lead technology and create it more and more efficient. Whereas CDO works with business and tries to implement this technology for the sake of business result, actually. Do we have both other types of of roles uh, in modern uh, enterprises nowadays uh, once again do, do we do we have both uh, both uh, types uh, of, of roles like the, the, tech, the more technical one and the more business one in modern enterprises today uh, yes because we can have a couple of roles because you know uh, it very um, let's say it's very dependent on the type of the organization so sometimes the technology is already that much business oriented that uh, you may not need the role of CDO and the CTO, CIO are able to lead the digitalization on their own. And sometimes you have traditional businesses or traditional organizations or quite kind, let's say, legacy traditional organizations that need to be digitized and need to be put into the operation of the, let's say, modern digital reality. We will probably talk about a couple of, uh, of those uh, examples and uh, use cases uh, in a moment but those organizations which would like to move fast or need to really transform due to changing of customer needs and requirements and actually expectations that customers have may, may benefit most from having a cdo who is focused solely on uh, digitalizing the company and pushing the operations and processes forward actually so they can coexist they can or uh, you may limit the roles to, let's say, you may have less roles, but with more responsibilities for those roles, or you can have more roles with specific areas of responsibility, but definitely they should cooperate. Mm -hmm. And one very important thing here, uh, if we think about digital transformation, I need to, I would like to underline it. Uh, digital transformation as such is not mostly about technology. Uh, technology is not the main driver, it should not be actually. It's about changing the way people work across the whole company. It's more about changing the way think and uh, apply the approach, introducing new technologies. So it, uh, the digital transformation in companies goes beyond IT and technology as such. It's actually about how people work. So then terms, uh, then comes up to something which is which we call very often a digital mindset. So. Uh, Actually, a digital mindset at some point need to appear in a, com uh, in a company which, which would like to transform digitally. And more the more people have this digital mindset, the better. Because this is thinking in terms of technology, of understanding how we can apply technology. And this is also one of the biggest uh, roles of a CDO to create this digital mindset across the company and to uh, evangelize this approach uh, in the company as much as possible. Because actually, we as CDOs use technologies 
but to build new reality and to turn some processes that we have been already doing in a old way into a new way. And uh, this is the kind of the idea how to adopt this digital mindset and close the work closely between technology and business, actually. Can you give some examples of uh, of the digital mindset, let's say, uh, how you manage to implement it? Yeah, sure. So if we think about digital mindset, you first of all need to have a look at the whole organization. You need to think where and uh, how you can use technology to make the processes efficient. You look at, for example, customer journeys uh, from end to end. It, in, if you work in the omnichannel reality, you think about the online, that people may start in online and people may do finalize the, the purchase in the offline world or the other way around. That's what we did actually in IKEA. When I when we were defining the digital transformation at IKEA, we uh, talked about the omnichannel approach and something which is called digital. I will explore this use case, but I would like to focus to would like to focus at this point about how to uh, create this digital uh, mindset in the company. So first of all, you identify the spots and the organizations which are most susceptible to be sped up by uh, digital uh, solutions and where also those digital solutions can improve the customer experience, which is often very, uh, very often measured by NPS, which is a net promoter score, very widely uh, known business metric, which asks the question, does, uh, do people actually like our processes that much that they would recommend buying, for example, this kind of a product or a service from our company? Uh, so uh, first of all, we need to create the, the digital mindset of uh, understanding the technology. Uh, in order to create a digital mindset, you need to understand also the principles and values and find the meaning, meaningful purpose of what you're doing. For example, a very good question is to, uh, is to ask a question why, if you're a CDO. To ask a question why you're doing that, what would you like to achieve? This is very often to the uh, to the approach of a kind of a business analyst that we with this role that we have were having in organizations in the projects for for a very long time, but this is a huge question today. That if you work closely with business teams and you ask them why would you like to do it, then you can recommend the, the best technology and you can discuss with tech teams or CTO or CIO about how we can deliver the, the solution to the customer. So this is uh, creating the digital mindset among the business customers within the organization that they have a trusted person with whom they can discuss, ask the questions, and then the best solution arrives, for example. So collaboration and co-creating, like the, the CDO to create a digital mindset among the business stakeholders need to be co-creating things. So creating the culture of openness, openness and empowerment also here is very important so that uh, that you work with the business stakeholders uh, who are seeing the value in what you're bringing because you have a good knowledge of technology, good relations within technology, and you're able to find and provide a good solution. You need to be also flexible. That's what the, why we mentioned the agile approach. Because uh, flexibility in today's world is very important because a lot of things are happening. We have had different changes, like uh, first of all, this hybrid model of work today. Supply chain supply chains have broken down for a couple of uh, months already. Now it's a bit stabilizing, but nobody knows what's going to happen. So flexibility is very important, and. Uh, those are, I would say, key elements and crucial elements of the building a digital mindset uh, across the company. And also, I think, uh, creating a culture of, uh, of teams who are empowered and are able to embrace the change, so that they are able to operationalize the change very quickly. Uh, instead of long planning, creating of long projects, they should be more or less agile. So I'm myself a big fan of uh, the agile methodologies, for example, planning uh, mostly for uh, next quarter. We should have kind of a yearly roadmap in general, but let's have a yearly roadmap that's adjusted, let's say every quarter, for example, uh, according to the situations and things that are happening on the market. And we adjust our course. We set our goals in, a, in the, let's say, three to four months period. Of course, 
cooperating to the bigger North Star, which is at the end of the year, or usually it's connected with the fiscal year. But in general, we need to adjust uh, very quickly. Also, technology helps that because sometimes new technologies are emerging. We'll probably discuss. We'll probably discuss about the AI and ChatGPT, uh, what's happening in the in the organizations today. But this is the example when you need to adjust very quickly. Okay, so maybe we'll just jump on uh, the, the the very latter point. Uh, how ChatGPT is going to uh, change uh, enterprise environment? Because we we hear so much about Chat GPT in uh, let's say consumer context and and in various yeah, contexts, sure. but not 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 in not in the enterprise one. Yes, this is a very hot topic and it's generating a lot of buzz today. Uh, I I have a feeling that it replaced metaverse uh, discussions that we have had for a couple of months already. But now we have Chat GPT and AI. We have a lot of experts on AI and how it's going to look like. But when we look at those uh, things that are uh, now appearing, and when I call, 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 um, connect it with the organizational trends, I connect the dots. And my opinion is that that we will use Chat GPD and all the AI-based solutions in companies, and we are already doing that. But it hasn't been called Chat GPT, or was not that let's say what, what it wasn't like a real peer case. But a lot of companies were automating their processes already. So. We will automate as much as possible, reducing manual, reducing mundane processes, things which are really not, uh, which are boring for people, let's say, because we also have, uh, we need, uh, this is also a very important thing that when we work on digitalization of processes and digitalization as such, we need to not only think about our customers, but also on our coworkers and people who work in the company. So we need to reduce as many manual, boring, and time-consuming processes, and here AI and solutions like ChatGPT are a huge thing. So especially if you create a content, especially if you put the solution like a ChatGPT in a good context, it speeds up, it speeds up um, looking for information, creating uh, frameworks, creating some content for specific situations, even creating a presentation when you feed the proper data into the AI solution, you can get a very good analysis of the data that you provide and some insights appear. And it's also very important that AI will soon have a higher capability of analyzing big chunks of data than a human mind, I think. So it will be able to provide better insights if you feed an appropriate set of data uh, because it's going to be more efficient in analysis. So we can speed up all those processes which are uh, which will require analyzing a lot, heaps of data actually, and reducing uh, all the processes which are manual, boring, and we can speed them up. On the other hand, uh, this is going to be, in my opinion, a bit of a danger for all of us because we will be using AI that heavily that less and less space for creative creativity will stay. And we need to have this creativity. Because creativity within the, within the companies is something which is uh, very often uh, a competitive advantage. A lot of companies based on creativity create something which is called unique IP, which is unique intellectual property. And each of the companies have, to some extent, unique IP, which is then sold as a product or as a service to the customer. And we need to be very cautious about how we apply the AI and automation because we shouldn't kill our unique IP or we shouldn't kill creativity of our, of our teams, of our product owners, of our, uh, let's say, people who are engaged and in, in a creation because there is always a group of people who are engaged in, 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 within the creation of the unique IP in the company. And if we automate everything and let's say put ChatGPT everywhere, most of us will create the same content, more or less the same content, but it's not going to be very different. So we either need to be really think, uh, we, we really need to be cautious to which uh, level we apply uh, AI solutions, where they should stay with human minds, with free to think and really invent things, or we really need to feed the AI with appropriate sets of data 
so that we still keep this uniqueness element as an output of the process. This is something that we're actually beginning uh, today. Uh, but this is also my thought, looking at the organizations, how they transform, how they change. It's not a good idea to jump into the AI solutions, you know, from end to end for each of the each of the processes. So it's every company needs to balance how they would like to approach and what should be like this is a good example of asking a question why why should we uh, uh, apply uh, ai in our company what do we would like to achieve is it like shortening the process shortening time to market or would you like to be more creative or more efficient in analyzing the data that we for example we do not have enough people and so on and so on so this is a very good question to ask why we would like to apply ai not if we should apply because probably it's obvious but why and then which solutions should be applicable to the to the to the company because of the competition will use it this is why yes yeah but, but you know okay everyone will apply uh, ai solutions and we uh, would you would you, uh, what is the differentiator then if all the companies which apply in chat gpt which bases on more or less the same database for example of course if you have a paid solution of the chat gpt you have a isolated your own database and so on but then you need to be somehow different from the competition uh, you need to be on the same level but you still need to find some ability to be ahead of the everyone else so the the real question why i'm saying why we as a company would like to use ai to be competitive on the market so maybe this should be the question actually uh the very breakthrough uh, chat gpt brings uh, in my opinion is that it changes the way we work uh, because yes. our intellectual work uh, becomes kind of indirect instead of direct that we are yes. working through a through a digital agent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't say that it uh, diminishes our creativity but it uh, it rather absolutely changes uh, our creativity and and the way we we think also at work uh, people may be afraid of it uh, uh -huh. personally i am as i think most of us are because uh, it's it's so new it, it's something so so strange and so different to to what what's been before so far yes uh, you're absolutely right that if it's if it's wisely used, it doesn't diminish our creativity, but it will have a tendency of making people more lazy. Because you can, you know, if you uh, use ChatGPT and then you can get up, get rid of some duties that you do, so you will shorten some things, but still save some time for you to be more creative thanks to the to the time that you reduce from using ChatGPT and the solution. I'm just saying that you shouldn't be like I will replace everything with ChatGPT. This is not the approach. Uh, as I say, that the, the time will tell. Uh, it might be the case that uh, I mean this shortens processes uh, uh -huh. from, from the CDO point of view. In my opinion, from 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 the processes uh, point of view. Yes. Uh, so uh -huh. we definitely, if 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 everyone is is shortening their processes so should yes, this is the, so should we uh, this is the market standard then absolutely you're right and you use the ai and automation uh, within the company as much as possible especially because the market is pushing you to do so for example yeah and i agree with you that you need to protect this unique ip i i, I love this uh, term I, I i haven't heard it before uh and yes it it is it will bring a tendency to for, for the people to, to 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 behave more lazy on the other mm -hmm. hand uh, this will change uh, entirely the way we work uh, this will not come let's say on 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 day one this will take time this will no. be a process this will be uh this this will come in time uh in in several breakthroughs but uh, i think this will be a very challenging uh uh, challenging thing to people who are process strategists in companies not only the digital ones 
definitely. I think when, when we are just discussing, I'm thinking like the this AI revolution, let's call it like that, because it's now becoming a real revolution. It's being implemented really uh, among a lot of companies. Now it's getting the widespread uh, coverage also in the media and so on. So this is a new dimension of digitalization. So we can now be able to digitalize companies in a new uh, way because we already did that, but it was not that visible. Now it's going to be really widespread and we can apply it to more and more functions across the companies. But okay, we will do it. So how can we leverage this? How can we use this remaining space so that people are able to be even better thanks to use AI? So this is just the new way for us, how we would like to turn this uh, tool into a benefit of the companies. Yes, this is, this is, this is well said, totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what is the role of a CDO to make a company data-driven? Data-driven is also a, a popular buzzword. Um, so everybody says we, we're relying more and more on metrics, we're relying more and yeah. more on data. Mm, but uh, let, uh, I, I don't I don't believe that it's that it's so widespread as uh, companies declare. Data are dispersed in every organization uh, more than anybody would would like to concede um, in various legacy systems. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it is it more? Uh, into a role of a, of, a, of a technical person like CIO, or is it a, a CDO that drives, you know, this this data integration and and making a, a company really data based? Mm -hmm. There is also a saying that uh, data is the new oil, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, it appears from time to time. So, uh, as you're saying, it may differ uh, between the company. Depending on our discussion about the roles that we had, it, it differs between companies which uh, role is most applicable. But definitely, it should be within CIO and CTO. But if there is a CTO, uh, this is a very important domain for a CTO to work with. So I would not imagine a CTO without working with data and data approach. So this is a, this is a very important period. So today, if you look at the data in the, within the companies, there are let's say major four areas, like you look at, look at them strategically to make decisions and to work with data on a strategic level. Uh, usually you work with data as if you're responsible for some data, like for example, it appears in some companies, there is a chief data officer, the CDO, but the chief data officer, not digital officer. So it, differ, it, it differs. So sometimes the CDO is just looking strategically uh, working with the C-level executives and looking, looking strategically using the domain that he has the analytical capabilities and the uh, data lakes and data warehouses to Im improve st strategic decisions. Sometimes the data is uh, data person just operates with technology, you know, supervises the data technologies, provides the data to specific areas, uh, optimizes them, automates, and so on. And then it uh, really turns into kind of the steward role. So he provides the data to all the stakeholders who are around the organization who really needs the data and so on. There is also the innovator role within the area of data, uh, how to use data within the, the company and how to make them better. So sometimes I think uh, this is the best. Uh, this is the best approach to, to be as much innovative with use of the data as possible. So from a point of view of a CDO, if data in your responsibility, and, and you should. So I think uh, it's also connected with the business capabilities that you need to look around the company. So you should also look around the technologies related to data, how you can improve your business operations. So as we mentioned, data as an oil, so you try to drill into the organization to get more and more data, and so you, you actually drill into the business use cases where you can use data, to improve business operations. So for example, you can uh, map the whole organization, identifying the most data susceptible processes or data relying processes. And you look at those processes, you do kind of a value stream mapping of the process across the organization. And you see in which areas we use data, where data are very important to make the decisions. 
have because sometimes you have huge organizations you have a lot of lots of data dispersed especially across uh, among the different silos with the organization and sometimes it's not very connected it's good to think about sometimes data processes that go, go along different silos and how they are interconnected for example how do teams cooperate how do they use the data do they have the same sets of data uh, or they have different should we put them together should they collaborate so there are different approaches to data you can think about improving processes you can think about having a good quality of data this is also one of the areas of the uh, data people in the organization how to have a good quality of data because sometimes you have same let's say set of data but in different systems but they are quite different sometimes different values different numbers but uh, I've been observing a couple of approaches and my favorite is, is to identify actually the whole organization identify where data can create value so you're trying to drill down into the organization and try to find value where you can use value from data where is the issue with data where is the uh, where is the difference in data in different systems but in general, if, if you think about CDO, the, the digital transformation and data, you need to identify places in the organization when you can use data to uh, get better business decisions. For example, when we are working at a digital transformation at IKEA, we analyzed how people move around the omnichannel uh, environment. We called it digital. So we have the a lot of we had a lot of uh, access uh, touch points. Uh, for the customers from where they can start uh, operating and especially after the pandemic when we had the e-commerce on the rise we saw that a lot of people who uh, were our traditional customers for the shops we called them silver generation later uh, even though they didn't use online channels previously they had a tendency to stay in the online channels after the pandemic even though the shops reopened they were still the same customers they were still using the the online channels because first of all they liked them second thing the whole market changed because it was uh, it it was like um, compulsory because because the traditional shops were closed so the whole market changed and the perception of online uh, was better and Finally, we observed that it's uh, we have a lot, a huge group of customers who are traditional customers, but moved to the online operations and now would like to order products online, but sometimes to collect them at the shop. So immediately it led to the to a business decision that we need to have a service when you need to have a pickup point in the store or around the country for those people who would like to order online, but still do and perform the traditional uh, pickup or delivery model that they go to the point and they collect goods themselves so this was one of the insights and then we uh, had a very good uh, feedback from the customers and we saw that more and more transactions are happening and the nps is rising so those uh, processes should be identified uh, on the basis of data especially uh, if you if we have uh, offline and online data this was the example of the analysis of the offline data purchases where they happen but also a very good thing is to use the uh, real-time data as much as possible so another example could be in the world of retail for example when a person enters the the location of the store or a shopping center uh, if we have this person profiled and the consent has been made by this con consumer to be profiled or for example this consumer this consumer has the application installed of a specific company then immediately the possibly the list of today's promotions may appear on the on the mobile phone and the, on the mobile in the mobile applications for this specific customer based on the profile based on the analysis based of the previous purchases and predicting a bit what could be uh, a good uh, pro next product for the customer. So those things, just very simple examples of that, uh, should be uh, as the area of analysis of data people, of uh, of a CDO, of everyone who'd like to get good insight from the data and how to uh, use those in the, within the company.
your top tips how to work with stakeholders, various stakeholders, and, and break silos. Because I think breaking silos is, is a very important for your job, isn't it? Yes. Um, it's a very important thing because uh, very often in today's companies, there are silos. Uh, even though a lot of companies say we don't have any more silos, we have restructured, the you know, organizational structure is different. No, there are still silos. There are still invisible barriers between people. So first of all, for from the point of view of a CDO or a person responsible for digitalization, you need to be present. Uh, you need to be visible. You need to have access to information. So usually you should be placed on the level of uh, C-level executives or at least on the level of board of directors. So you should be visible. You should have a good uh, peer relation with those people. So, I mean, business stakeholders, technology stakeholders, and so on. So once you're secured in this area and in this position, you are able to operate. So you start to build relations with those people. You start to be present in the most important meetings or executive committees or uh, councils, product councils, or the other councils that make decisions around the company. And once you gather the information, you start to provide your feedback based on your experience based on your insight, based on your knowledge of technology, and you say, hey, maybe we can use this, or maybe we should use this technology, or maybe we should consider this process that could be improved by more data that we will mine from, let's say, this area of the organization. Uh, should we, for example, think about how our supply chain works, or should we look at our omnichannel presentation of products uh, to the and in the front of to the customer? So then uh, if you're visible, if you are present, you may ask those questions. First of all, you need to get this information and then you need to be visible and ask those questions and try to bring value to the discussions that business has. And also then you take technology to, to implement, uh, I mean, technology people to implement business changes and actually to create kind of the collaboration and you facilitate the relation. So those steps allow you to build credibility. And after some time, if you uh, would like to be a successful CDO, you need to be credible uh, among business leaders. You need to be credible towards technology uh, organization as such, so that you are able to convey the understandable message to the technology and you can use technology to find solutions to different business problems. And uh, and actually, you need to work with benefits. So it's very important that you try to work out the benefit for the organization and to find the places where you can more them more efficient by technology. And at the end of the day, if all those things, you if you tick all those boxes, you can say it's going to be, it's going to work. It's going to be a good uh, approach. And you will get more and more credibility, and the whole machine is going to be faster and faster. Um, your top tips, let's say, how to be a driving force, how to spark changes. First of all, I would say think about what kind of organization you are at. So, if you are in a traditional organization, you need to be really aware what we would like to achieve. For example, looking at uh, IKEA that they worked at. Uh, it was a traditional organization that needed to be uh, put into a digital era very quickly. But you cannot change the DNA of the organization. You need to look at the, the, the very important kind of the core DNA of the organization, how you can leverage that. So first of all, think about where you are, uh, what you would like to achieve. And basing on that, you need to create kind of a collaboration between teams. Uh, be a good facilitator. This is a this is a first tip. The second tip, the first of all, the first tip is to think about the organization what you would like to achieve. The second tip is to be uh, to be a facilitator because very often you combine business and technology teams. You need to be good in stakeholder relations. You need to really think about your stakeholders. You need to be in a close contact with all of them. So this is very important so that you move around the company and you do not get closed in one area. You do not sit in a closed room or at home only. You need to move around the company and to be uh, working with people. 
And the third thing I would say, a very quick tip, as many as possible times, ask yourself why we are doing things, why we would like to implement this, why we are still doing this uh, in this way. Maybe we should already improve by using AI or a chat, uh, chat GPT or anything like that that we today have. And uh, and this is actually the, the most important thing, to be able to identify right moment, right space within the organization to ask correct questions so that it trigger thinking and trigger uh, opening the minds towards the new technologies and uh, let people identify, hey, maybe I should change my ways of thinking, ways of working due to do this new emerging technology. And let's try it. So this is actually your uh, biggest role as a CDO from my point of view. Piotr, thank you so much for this informative and, and very honest conversation. Thanks, Matej. And, uh, and yes, and it reminds us all, I think, that it's all, always worth asking why at the end Definitely. of the day, or maybe at the beginning Definitely. of the day. So yes. once again, thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. See you next time. Thank you so much for listening to Sherpa Search on Tech. If you have enjoyed the show, please subscribe to our show wherever you listen. Thanks again. The Sherpa Search on Tech podcast is a production of Sherpa Search, an executive search firm specializing in the tech industry, helping hire the right people for expert and managerial positions, and advising how to build and develop long-lasting, high-performing IT teams. If you would like to learn more, reach out to us at maciej.szczerba at sherpasearch.tech or visit our website sherpasearch.tech. See you next time.